Greetings. We, are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. I used to skateboard a lot. It was all I could think about. I would skate to school, then meet with my friends after school, and skate until it was time to eat supper. Weekends were the same thing. 10 to 12 hours a day, I was on that board. I ate, breathed, and slept with my board. Skating, was my life. Then I met a girl named Grace. Kind of an old fashioned name, named after her grandmother. She was a skater too. How cool is that? We skated together all the time. She loved skating. I on the other hand was obsessed. For her skating was a hobby, for me it was everything, until I had my first epic fail. Sure I had fallen a jillion times, a couple of them were pretty hard. But this fail, was a game changer. I was sliding a rail, when one of my wheels snagged a bolt, and down I went. I face planted into some cement steps, and it knocked me out cold. I woke up in the hospital, with 37 stitches, and 6 teeth missing. I wasn't paralyzed or anything, but it was kind of a wake up call. I wasn't wearing any pads or a helmet, because in my crowd, those are for amateurs. Even if I would have been wearing the gear, it wouldn't have helped much. My mom and dad came to visit me in the hospital, but so did my girlfriend. I was so embarrassed because she saw me fall, but mostly because of all people, I didn't want her to see me so busted up. I looked like I just got into a fight with a chainsaw. But she hugged me and said not to worry about it. She said I wasn't that handsome to start with. I would have smiled, but it wasn't funny. Actually it was funny, it just hurt to smile. So I didn't get back on my board for about 6 months, and when I did, it was never the same. There was always that nagging fear of another epic fail, another face plant into the steps. Fear is a weird thing. I used to do all kinds of stupid stuff, just to overcome the fear. I would live for the adrenaline rush. But I learned the hard way that fear is your body's way of warning you of impending danger. I always believed that courage, was doing what you had to, in spite of the fear. In reality, disregarding the warning signs of fear, can just be stupidity. Don't get me wrong, I am not a coward, but as you get older, and you get a few of those hard life lessons under your belt, you tend to start adding a little wisdom with your courage. Anyway, Grace and I kept seeing each other, and we quickly fell in love. She was my new passion. We still skated together occasionally, but our activities eventually began to diversify, but we still spent all our waking moments together. One day, in a moment of youthful indiscretion, I touched her in an inappropriate way, and she kindly moved my hand to a more appropriate location, but she took advantage of the moment to share her heart with me. She said she had been looking for the opportunity to reveal something important to me. She said that she had an encounter with God. I asked, you mean like an alien visitation? No, she replied. You got religion? She again said, no not at all. She proceeded to tell me of an event in her life that had left her rather scarred. She was very close to her grandfather, and he had passed away a couple years ago, and it devastated her. I asked why she had never told me about this before, and she said it was just too painful to talk about. She explained what happened at the funeral. Her parents were atheists, and so they never went to church. But at the funeral, the preacher, laid it out pretty good. He said we are all given a certain amount of time in life. Some of us get a hundred years, some only get a hundred days. Some even less. But God makes that decision. He decides when you come into this world, and when you leave. She said she had always felt the presence of God, but didn't know what it was. She didn't know how to describe it, without diminishing it. So anyway, she said for the last two years, she had been pondering the events of that day. The message from that preacher went on to talk about the love of God, and how he proved his love on the cross, by paying for our sins. The message stuck with her. 
she said it brought her a peace, that she had never known before. It was a light shining in the darkness. Her family life took on a new dimension. She began to feel more humble, more loving. That's what I loved about her, she had an inner glow, that shined through her eyes. She started to read and study about God, online. She was afraid to have a Bible in her home, because her family was antagonistic about Jesus. Her dad even told her, if you ever get religion, you can get out of my house. So she went on her quest to find God, incognito. Everything was kind of clandestine. But she said she was praying one day, and it happened. She was just crying out to God for him to reveal himself to her, and he did. She explained what happened, but I couldn't really relate. It all sounded kind of weird and spooky to me at first. But the more she spoke, the more I listened. Something was happening to me. I felt like my heart was melting. Not in a bad way, it seemed like a hard shell of fear and hate, was melting away from my insides. She said that God revealed to her why she was named Grace. Grace, means undeserved love. It's when you love someone, who doesn't deserve it. And that's what he offered her, Grace. She told me that God offered to love her, no matter what. When she was good, when she failed, and everything in between. Unconditional love. How could I refuse she asked. Then she asked me if I wanted to have that same experience. I was unsure. What would my friends think? You know what, I didn't care. If I had to choose between my friends and God, they couldn't be very good friends. So I jumped in with both feet. We prayed together, we cried together, and laughed together. I had never experienced anything like it in my life. The overwhelming joy, and sense of purpose and belonging, goes beyond words. So the journey began. Grace and I got married, and we are living happily ever after. Don't get me wrong, we are not perfect, and neither is our relationship. But God always gets us over our hurdles, and we are in this for the long haul. So what about you? Where are you at in life? Are you wondering where you fit in? I was there too, just a few years back. I went from skateboarding, to girls, to God. Quite the progression. Your life can be an epic fail, or an epic success. Is God the missing ingredient in your life? Is he the missing piece of your puzzle? There's only one way to find out. Don't disregard your fear of death. It's your spirit's way of warning you of impending danger. Add some wisdom to your courage, and give your heart to God. Peace be unto you and your house. Love God with your whole heart, mind, and strength, and he will give you life, love, and purpose. Beauty, from ashes.